Hi, I'm Mike Overly, author of Guitar Encyclopedia. This is Guitar Forum 2.0. Welcome back. Or should we say tonight, aloha. Got the ukulele. So uh, I was in, uh, on the Big Island uh, last month and um, uh, went to Kilauea and saw the lava flow into the ocean and experienced creation, which was totally amazing. And went to uh, Mauna Kea, the summit, and saw the stars and the Milky Way and just, just absolutely incredible, you know, 14,000 feet and all that. And went horseback riding in the YPO Valley, which is uh, beyond belief, spectacularly uh, beautiful. So uh, while I was there, I actually took uh, uh, my ukulele. I call it mele. Mele is Hawaiian for song, really. And uh, actually took uh, uh, this uh, ukulele that I bought in um, uh, Kauai in 2015 and, and took it back to Hawaii. And, and uh, so that was pretty cool. And um, uh, played a lot of ukulele while I was there. Uh, so uh, we've done other ukulele shows, so check them out on YouTube and all that kind of stuff. But this uh, show tonight is, is focused on finger style. So that's what's called finger style ukulele. And what I want to focus more on tonight is how do you actually, uh, you know, play the ukulele. Uh, one of my students actually was playing his ukulele with a pick. And uh, when I came uh, into the room and I heard the sound, I go like, man, it doesn't even sound like an ukulele. And, uh, and that's what got us off into, generally speaking, you don't use a pick with the ukulele, you use your fingers. It's, it's much more authentic and, and there's a lot of other reasons why. Uh, one of the most important reasons is that the ukulele has its nylon or plastic strings and when you put that nylon plastic pick on it, you get that ticky ticky sound. So it sounds much better if you use your fingers and it gives you uh, a rounder sound or, or, the, or your fingernails as we'll see. So uh, tonight we'll start the show with looking at the right hand and what we find on the right hand is uh, that you have the thumb and we call it T and then I is your index finger, M is the middle finger and A. Now it's called A, some say R for ring finger but these come from Spanish names anyway so we don't really care about all this. We'll just call it T I M A. And uh, the little finger is, is C, but it's hardly ever used. So uh, this show will be on T-I-M-A. So the first thing that we want to do is we're going to say that if you use your fingers, including your thumb, you can actually strum. And if you strum uh, the ukulele with your hands, then it turns out to be a concept that is called, uh, uh, colloquially, brush. So what we have is if we take the fingers M and A, then what we do is we go down on the strings and brush. Now I'm just going to play, uh, 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 we'll get into this later, a chord. And so now we have this down M A, so there's my M A fingers, and now we'll just make that sound of down. Then what happens is we're going to come up with our I finger and this I finger will then catch the string on the fleshy side of your finger and make a different sound. So it has a much more percussive sound on the MI brush down because actually you're hitting it with your nails. And then when you come up, you're doing the fleshy part and it's softer and rounder. And, and now when you put those two things together, you get a down with the MA and an up with the I, and that gives you this. And uh, if we made it simply be that it's going to be um, eighth rhythm, then that would be like one and two and. So our brush now would be one and two and. And then you get that kind of train sound going along like a train leaving the station. Slow and then gradually getting faster. So the brush is, uh, you know, how, how you uh, strum and also you can see that what it does, it's much more efficient strumming than say down, 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 down or up, 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 up. So you have this down, up and you can play much faster because you're more efficient. So that, and we'll use all these techniques of finger style inside uh, the show tonight when we play. Now the next part is then if we use our fingers, including our thumb, then we start to call that finger picking. Now finger picking is, uh, uh, has three parts. It's called isotonic, 
ISO is one, tonic is sound, so it's one sound, and it really means one sound at a time. That's isotonic finger picking. And then there's the pinch, where you're going to use your thumb and a finger and pinch two sounds at the same time. And then there's pluck, where you would use your thumb and your other fingers and, and, and pluck more than two sounds, like three or four on the ukulele. So, to illustrate this, what we'll do is we'll just now have an isotonic finger picking, where now we're going to put the thumb on string four. Of course, the uh, top string, the thick string, is four, and then three and two, and the uh, string on the bottom, the thin one, is one. So four, three, two, one. So we're going to put our thumb on string four, put our I finger on three, M finger on two, and A finger on one. And that's pretty much what sets you up for um, uh, the entire thing. So here would be like let's call it finger picking pattern one. These are like almost patterns. So, or they are patterns. So, this goes T, I, M, A. Now we really don't want to get into rhythm and all that kind of stuff tonight, so let's just deal with our uh, finger picking patterns. Now if we do that pattern backwards, then it would be T, A, M, I. So we got the T-I-M-A, T-A-M-I, and now we can begin to put those together. Now any one sound at a time when you finger pick is uh, isotonic finger picking, so we could have uh, like a billion patterns and we don't want to get off into this tonight, we want to play some songs. So here would be the, you know, other ways to do this. T-I-M-I-A-I. -I -I. Or on and on and on and on in anything that you want to play. Now, pinch then would say that I'm going to play thumb, uh, two sounds, thumb and some finger, uh, and play them at the same time, and that would be called a pinch. So here's the thumb and the A finger on the first string. That would be called pinch. And then you just fill it out with your other fingers. Pinch. Pinch. Or pinch anything. So the concept of thumb and finger creates the pinch. And then finally pluck, where you're going to play more than uh, two sounds at a time. So you could begin with T. I M, T M A, and T I M A all together, four sounds of the ukulele. So that covers finger picking as you would understand it as those terms isotonic, pinch, and um, uh, pluck. Now, we'll quickly run through the tuning concept because we did that in the first show. You have low G and high G ukuleles. You have baritone ukuleles that have low D. It's more guitar-like. And because of those tunings, then what we find is that the shapes that you play when you play chords have different letter names uh, according to the ukulele that you're playing. Now, we've covered this already, so we won't go into this too deep. But if you were playing the ukulele, like a soprano ukulele, then you would play this shape and you'd call it F major chord. But if you were playing the baritone ukulele, and you, or, or even the guitar, and you played that same shape, you'd call it a C major chord. So the concept is that you have one shape, but it has two different names relative to the ukulele you're playing. We'll skip guitar for tonight, and we'll just talk about if you're playing the baritone ukulele, you call it one letter name. If you play the same shape, same chord shape, on a, diff on a soprano ukulele, then you call it a different letter name. So that's all we want to say about this and, and, and kind of let that go. Now, keys, of course, have to do with how you choose the chords that you want to play in a given progression in song. So quickly to run through this, Hawaiian uh, music is, 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 this isn't set in stone or anything, but these are generalities, that you would say that Hawaiian music is generally organized around the keys on the, on the soprano ukulele, F and C and G and A. Whereas if you played the baritone or the uh, guitar, in fact, then you would call those same keys C and G and D and E. 
uh, it doesn't matter what you call it, you're still going to make the same shapes. And then, of course, that gives you the chords 1, 4, and 5, and then uh, that is, gets glued together grammatically, let's say, and that begins to create uh, harmony progressions, which you would probably call as songs. So let's have a, 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 our first little simple one, four, five progression, uh, and it doesn't matter what the, the, the what you call it. Let's just deal with. We got these shapes, and we would call that the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord. And so now what happens, a simple eight bar, this would be eight bar progression, of four beats would be one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The four chord for two bars, the one chord for two bars, the five chord for two bars, and the one chord for two bars. So that's an eight bar, one, four, five progression, totally uh, beginning and simple. Of course, you could finger pick it. Etc. 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 You could strum it. Etc. Etc. And and apply the strumming concepts and the finger picking concepts that we previously learned and apply that to your harmony progression. Now the important thing why I wanted to get through that simple eight bar one four five is because now what happens and this is very this is in all music but this is very a key aspect of, of, of Hawaiian music it deals with what is called the turnaround now the turnaround is simply a series of chords at the end of the progression that turns the song around to the beginning it's called a turnaround so uh, one of the most classic turnarounds in Hawaiian music and you'll hear it over and over and over and over and over in different keys of course is that you would have two and five and this two five would lead to one and that's your turnaround so you have this uh, uh, two uh, five one so if we had one we're changing keys now without dealing with what we call it one and four and five seven so the same 12 bar would be one and four and five and one and now the two chord and the five chord and the one. Now these two and fives I've changed to dominant seventh, like that would be called five seven, I mean no excuse me that's two seven, two dominant seven, five seven and one major. So if we play our eight bar and put the turnaround on it, what it does is it makes it become a 12 bar and 12 bar is the most common thing that people are used to hearing whether you're playing rock or blues or country or whatever uh, or, or Hawaiian music. So here's our simple eight bar, two, three, four. That's the eight bars. Now here's the four bar turnaround, two, five, one. So put that all together and make 12 bars. Here's the turnaround. <laughs> and that'll give you a basic idea of how you use that turnaround to extend progressions and make a longer song form. Now what we're going to do is, uh, in the same way that you could add those four bars to the end of a song called turnaround, now we could add four bars to the front of the song and call it an intro, an introduction. So now we have an intro and we're going to introduce a new uh, 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 harmony in this thing and that is now the diminished chord so-called or the diminished seventh that as I call it in encyclopedia, minor flat five or minor six uh, uh, flat five and, and what we mean by that now is here would be the one chord in G then here would be D minor uh, six flat five and and the five seven D seven so we have a five diminish which is D diminish and G and 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 five seven so
and that would function as a, uh, an intro to a song. So that intro then is used in uh, lovely Houlihan's famous, uh, you know, uh, Hawaiian song that is used uh, for beautiful uh, hula uh, dancing uh, at, the, uh, at the beach or in a concert hall or whatever, or, or at a party, at a luau. So here we go, and here would be the introduction. This is lovely hula hands. Now that would repeat, we ain't got time, and now we go into like the, the chorus. And so there was that 2-5 uh, turnaround thing that got us back to the one chord on Lovely Hula Hands. Um, you know, you should uh, go to YouTube and, and, and uh, call up uh, Lovely Hula, Hands Hula, and, and watch all the beautiful music and dancing that occurs with that song. Okay, well, that is Melly, and now let's, um, let's pick up another ukulele. This ukulele is still soprano, so it's still, uh, you know, high G on this one. Uh, that, uh, Melly, I've got a low G on it. Uh, this, uh, now, this is a Camuela ukulele. Uh, from the early uh, 1920s, and um, uh, a beautiful Hawaiian koa wood, beautiful, beautiful uh, ukulele. And now we're going to do another uh, 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 intro type idea, but this time uh, we're in a, a different key. And now we have the uh, two diminished this time. And then the 5 7 2 diminished in 5 7. So the intro would go. And then that would lead you off. So the idea there is another use of the, of the uh, minor 6 flat 5 in uh, intro function. And that would be, um, uh, we're going to use that in the song called Hooky Lao. Now, Hooky Lao is. Uh, uh, famous old-time Hawaiian uh, function, uh, Ohana function, Ohana's family, where uh, uh, they would go down to the ocean with their fishing nets, and then they would throw their nets out into the sea, this is the lyric of the song, and then they would drag in all the fish, and then they would drag the fish into the beach, and then they would uh, divvy out all the uh, fish to uh, the Ohana, and everybody would uh, go home and eat uh, fish and poi. And now, in the uh, verse, uh, that was the intro to Hooky Lao. In the verse of Hooky Lao, now we have uh, a, a, another chord, uh, a cool chord. This time now it's the major sharp five that is traditionally called augmented, but it's major chord with uh, sharp five. So if we take a major chord, now I'm going to say the tone numbers on this tone one, tone three, tone five, and tone eight. One, three, five, eight. Then what we got is a. Um, uh, uh, a major chord. Now, of course, on this, it's really not tone one on the high G, it's really tone eight. But we'll think about it as one, three, five, and eight, and make it a major chord. Now, if we take that five and go one fret higher, that's sharp. So we'll take F major, uh, uh, and, and of course, that's a B flat on soprano ukulele, F on the baritone. And then what we would do is we take that five and sharp it and that creates the sound of this uh, 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 augmented, which is really a major chord with a sharp five, major sharp five. So this, and now that, that is functioning, this uh, major sharp five thing, it's functioning as what we call the passing chord, because uh, it's not really in the key, so what it's doing is it's passing between chords of the key and, and creating, uh, so two chords of the key would be the five chord and the one chord. But we can stick this flat three major sharp five in the middle and create a passing chord. So now we got the five chord, then this passing chord, flat three uh, major sharp five, and then the one chord. So that. 
Now, one of the cool things that you could do on the ukulele, of course, and, and music in general, is play other inversions. Inversions are when you put other uh, bass sounds, uh, lower letters in the, in the bass. So what we have in that progression is the sound of now instead of dropping back down, we can make it go up. So then we can have this sound. Well, fourth finger on this though. And then, so we have this. Let me pay attention. So, now fingerstyle works good in this because you can hear that that way. Now in, uh, so now let's do the verse of Hooky Lao. Two, three, four. And then that repeats that verse part and then it goes to the chorus. So hooky law. We're kind of fragmenting songs up because uh, we're running out of time already. Now the next part is then what we want to look at is, is, the, is the concept uh, of taking, uh, making major and minor. So if we take this uh, major chord, one, three, five, three, one, three, five, eight concept, and we take the three and we flat it, then we get one flat three five, and that's minor. So B flat major on the soprano, F major on the baritone, and B flat minor, F minor. So uh, Is had a, uh, it has a beautiful song, A White Sandy Beach in Hawaii, and uh, it uses the major minor. So one major. So that major minor uh, uh, made that song, um, and it's such a pretty song. You should go listen to White Sandy Beach by Is. So now what we're going to do is we'll change, uh, and now we'll... Uh, so now here's another beautiful old uh, uh, ukulele. This is uh, uh, once again a, a, a 20s uh, Gibson, uh, the Gibson ukulele, and um, high G on this one also. I kind of like to use high G on, on, on older period instruments because that's more traditional of what uh, the original ukulele concept was and then in more uh, modern times then uh, the low uh, G is kind of what people are into uh, for its uh, bigger frequency sounds and more bass, you know. Now, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take that uh, major minor concept and apply it to what we would call a lick. And now what we'd have is if we take this, uh, that one, three, five, concept, one, three, five, eight, and make it major, then we have three and, and one, let's call it. And if we take that three and flat it, we got flat three and one. So you only, we're only uh, pinching now, but we would pinch three and one, or three and eight, whatever you want to think, and flat three and one or eight. That enables us to create some licks. That would be a minor, minor, major, major, minor. And now we're moving to a different set, but it's still minor and major. So you get. Now you notice it popped up. That was, uh, we, we've covered all that about the high G and re-entrant and on and on and on. But, so now what, the, what we'll use that lick in is a, a song that I actually I wrote when I was in Hawaii. Ho Now Now is called City of Refuge. City of Refuge is a place on the big island where uh, if, if you had done something evil, kapu, kapu means uh, forbidden or whatever, uh, like a crime, and uh, you could get yourself to this place on the big island called the City of Refuge, Ho, refuge, Ho Now Now, then uh, uh, you'd be absolved and you'd be free and 
an awesome thing. Of course, you'd be killed if you didn't get there, so you better get there. Anyway, the point is, I wrote a song while I was there called uh, uh, Ho Now Now, and uh, I'm going to use that lick in this song. Let's see. Here's the lick. So that's um, a bit of something that um, uses that major minor lick stuff. Okay, the next song now is um, we'll use this um, um, pull off concept here and uh, let's we'll see if I skip the pages or whatever I don't even know what I'm doing uh, and now what we're going to do is we're going to do a, a, a hammer on and pull off now hammer on is when you play a sound and then don't pluck it but use your finger to play something you just slap your finger down that's called hammer on pull off is the opposite where you uh, you know pluck a string or, or pick it whatever you want to call it and pull your finger off so that's the pull off and the hammer on uh, using it now on on a, on a uh, uh, one major and now pulling off to this six tone makes it major and major six. So, I'd like to uh, finish the show out tonight. Uh, uh, of course, we didn't even play um, the baritone ukulele, which has a low D and, and, and gives you different keys and things like that, but uh, you can't do everything in one show. So, next time we'll do something else. Anyway, thanks for tuning in the show. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, get yourself a ukulele. Uh, go to Hawaii and, uh, and have some fun on the beach. Okay, till next time. Aloha. And I'm going to go out with a, a, a cool song by Christy Lassiter uh, off her new album, uh, Manei Mai Oe. Mm -hmm.